is space law. Do you care? Yes, you do. Let me tell you why. This exciting topic is still in its infancy, but thankfully lawyers and countries are hard at work to provide a framework of who owns space and what can be done within it. I am joined by a dear friend to discuss this pressing idea. Hello, good to be here. Let's begin. Yes, quite. Shall we start at the Outer Space Treaty of 1967? Indeed, it is important to note that there have been five space treaties made by the United Nations, but the original Outer Space Treaty is the most widely adopted, with 104 countries signing on. The Outer Space Treaty states that firstly, there shall be no military bases or weapons of mass destruction placed in orbit or any kind of weapons on the moon or other celestial bodies. Other treaty provisions underscore that space is no single country's domain and that all countries have a right to explore it. These provisions state that space should be accessible to all countries. No country can claim national ownership. Countries are to avoid contaminating and harming space or celestial bodies, and countries exploring space are responsible and liable for any damages their activities might cause. The following three treaties, written in 1968, 72, and 75 respectively, expound upon the details of the first space treaty by providing an obligation to help astronauts in need regardless of nationality and the requirement of reporting regularly to the United Nations on any space mission longer than 30 days. Which leads us to the Moon Treaty. Passed in 1979, it attempted to provide more concrete language to the previous treaties, such as essentially banning the exploitation of space and providing a framework for stringent but orderly mining of the moon and other celestial bodies. But that was the limit that the international community was willing to sign on to. The Moon Treaty is considered a failure. Because of the 17 countries that signed on, only one has the capability of space travel, namely India. In fact, the United States Senate actually opposed the ratification of the treaty, and in 2015 the US government legalized space mining. Japan. China, India, and Russia soon followed suit. This has caused much confusion and controversy on claims and mining rights. One side will argue that there is no jurisdiction in space, and every country for themselves, if you will. While developing nations are concerned that the space-faring nations of today will monopolize space resources, leaving none left for them. In short, there are so many countries working on this problem, the only consensus are documents with extraordinarily vague speech, with close to no power to enforce them at all. This truly is the Wild West of Up. Well, it looks like I am out of time. If I had more time, I would tell you interesting things about space law like, currently, if you were able to get to space and mine an asteroid, you would be allowed to keep whatever profits you make off it, but you would still have to pay taxes. Now for the question of the day. Do you believe that we should keep space preserved in its natural state? Or should we exploit it to the utmost of our ability? Let me know in the comments. Cheerio what what for destructive creativity. I... I'm the narrator.